I awoke the other morning and I suddenly realized I no longer lived in America. It was as if I had moved. I no don't live in America anymore. I didn't recognize the country that I lived in. And then I remembered and I realized and I had this revelation. I had awoken to live in bizarro America. If you grew up reading Superman comics, which I did, and Superman was your hero, you know that there was an alternate Superman. There was bizarro Superman. It was like Superman, but did everything 180 degrees apart. Superman was good. Bizarro Superman was bad. Superman was honest. Bizarro Superman was dishonest. And that's, it suddenly hit me. That's the problem we have today. We've transitioned from America into bizarro America, from the United States into the bizarro United States. And that's what our countries become. And I no longer like it. I don't love it anymore. I was born in 1951. I grew up loving this country. My parents loved this country. My father quit high school and never did finish to go off and fight earlier than he had to in the Second World War. He served in the North Atlantic, the Mediterranean, the South Pacific. My uncle went to war. Other relatives went to war. My grandparents loved this country. My one uh, great-grandparent that was alive when I was a kid, she loved the country. We all loved the country. And then I got to college. 1969, over 50 years ago. And I found myself struggling with forces, professors who were trying to make me hate this country. Not most of my professors, by no means all of my professors, but quite a few. I had a uh, left-leaning professor who took taught a course that I took. It was called American Imperialism. That was the whole point of a course, to convince us that we lived in an imperialist society, an imperialist country, an empire, an American empire. Everything we had to read, everything we had to do in that course was designed to convince us of just that. I had another professor who taught me modern Russia. He was a communist. I mean, this was 1970, 71. This is after uh, Dr. Zhivago, the movie had come out. David Lean's great movie. And this guy looked like, he dressed like uh, Antipov, Pasha Antipov, you know, Strelnikov. Remember Strelnikov in the movie? I mean, he wore boots. He had this long green greatcoat that he would wear when it was cold. He had a little little cap with a red star in it. And he would try to, when he found out, if I fell asleep in course one day, I was working at night at a factory, he tried to convince me to give out pamphlets to help him organize the proletariat at the factory I worked at. This guy was totally divorced from reality. The people I worked with didn't think they were proletarians. They had homes they owned. Many of them had places down the beach. They had above ground pools. They didn't see themselves as workers and peasants by any, any stretch of the imagination. But I couldn't get through to him on that. Of course, he had never worked in a factory. I don't know if he'd ever worked at all in his life. That's a product of red diaper parents. I had a, 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 another professor, you know, all we read, it was English. And we, didn't, we did everything but English. It was all political tracts we had to read, condemning the country, condemning its policies, condemning this, condemning that. It was really difficult for me not to develop a hatred of this country. And they did drag me to the left. Ironically, the only thing that kept me from going all the way to the left, and I've talked about it before, I'll link to the video here, was getting to know some of the people in what in my day would be called today Antifa. And when I realized how these people's minds were, what they wanted for this country, what their inclinations were, 
I realized that as bad as our country might be, relatively speaking, the last bunch of people in the world I would want to see running it was this group, because they literally, the one guy, the leader of a group told me if people didn't you know, get into line quickly, they line them up against the wall and start shooting. That's where we're at today. Despite my efforts to resist this, despite the efforts to resist it when I got to academia and I was, I was a, a conservative fish in a, in a sea of liberals and progressives, it was awfully hard not to just give in and go along and to yield. The pressure to yield was enormous. You'd be so much happier, be so much more accepted, so much less loathed. I mean, I used to sit in my office, my door, and I could hear discussions, not about me personally, but about Republicans in general or, or people who supported uh, George Bush or liked Ronald Reagan. You know, what should happen to them all? What the Cretans they were? You know, if, if I had been black or a woman or a lefty, I, and these people were conservatives, I could have accused them of microaggressions. I actually did go to my chair one day and I said, we had just issued this thing on microaggressions. And I, I read the definition. I said, is that right? He said, I said, well, it just happened to me. You know, two guys across the hall from me are, you know, attacking Republicans. This is a microaggression by this definition. And he said, oh, come on, Mike. You know what this is about. And of course, I didn't know what it was about. It wasn't about protecting me. It was protecting protected classes, minorities, women, people on the left not people on the right, even though <laughs> in academia, I was a distinct minority. I was a distinct minority. We needed protection. We were being weeded out. As I've said before, when I got to that department, 20% of it was, I would say, conservative. It's about 4% now. And I think that's been the trend over the last 30 years almost everywhere. And that's why I've come to realize that the America I love is gone. Progressives have systematically destroyed it. The virtues of, of free press, freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, all being destroyed. It's all gone. The sanctity of our elections, gone. Superman's gone. We're left with bizarro Superman. America's gone. We're left with bizarro America. And to quote the Reverend Wright, I don't God bless America. God damn America. God damn the America that progressives have created to replace the America that I grew up loving. God damn this America. It's over. I'm done. They destroyed what I loved, and I'm not going to love what they've left in its wake. For me, it's that simple. That's what I think. What do you think about Bizarro America? Let me know in a comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, Keep fighting.